In this video, we will introduce piecewise functions. We won't actually get to the point where we make piecewise functions. We'll just be looking at how you make the different pieces that would become a piecewise function. So a piecewise function is just when you take multiple functions and put them together and they become a piecewise function. But again, we're just going to take a look at how we get the pieces in this video. So let's start by just taking a look at graphing a line. So we're going to start by graphing y equals 2x minus 1. This is in y equals mx plus b form. So we would start with our y-intercept at negative 1. And then our slope is 2, or 2 over 1. So from that point, we can go up 2 and write 1. That would give us a line, but I'll just go ahead and go up 2 over 1 and get a few more points. And then we can also go down and to the left to get some more points and finish it off with a line. So that's y equals 2x minus 1. Nothing new there. But how do we make this into a piece that could be used in a piecewise function? Well, it might look something like that. So we have our equation y equals 2x minus 1. But then it tells us when we're actually going to do this equation. We're going to make this line if x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's start by just getting our line back in place. So we have to start by thinking, where are the x values greater or equal to 0? So that would be this part of the graph. So we're just going to do the line in that part. So what we can do is erase the part of the line that's not in this section. So we'll go and erase up to about there. And that's basically our graph. Let me get rid of my orange arrows now. Now the last thing we have to do is put a point at the start of this line. And since the point 0, negative 1 is part of the graph, because it says when x is greater than or equal to, we would put a nice solid point at our y-intercept at 0, negative 1. So we have a solid point, and we're just using the line that goes to the right of the y-intercept, because that is when x is greater than or equal to 0. So that would be a piece that could be used in a piecewise function. Now let's show a different piece of this same function. Now we're going to show this line when x is less than 0. So which part of the graph would have x values less than 0? Those would be over here. Let's go ahead and erase the part of the line that is not in that part of the graph. So we'll erase back to our y-intercept. Let's go ahead and get rid of our orange arrows that we use for guidance. And now the difference between this one and the, the first one we did is in this one, x is less than 0. x is not equal to 0. So what we use in that situation is we use an open point at 0, negative 1. So let's put a nice open point at 0, negative 1. So this means that the point 0, negative 1 is not a solution to this function. But it is where the function starts from. So that's what the open point signifies. A starting point, but not an actual solution. Let's try another one. This one is a little different. This one is going to have an endpoint on the left side and the right side. So when you see the range given with the variable in between two less than or less than or equal to signs, and then the two numbers on the left and right of that, it means that in this case, x is in between negative 2 and positive 4. Negative 2 won't actually be a solution because it says less than. And positive 4 will be a solution because it says less than or equal to. So let's take a look on the graph. Where is x equals negative 2? It's right there. And x equals positive 4 is over here. And if we just extend these lines, you can now see that we are going to graph the part of the line that's 
in between the x values of negative 2 and positive 4. All right, let's get rid of my scribble there. Let's get our eraser again and erase the part of the line that is not part of this piece of a function. We have a little bit up here to erase. And we have down at the bottom to erase. So that is pretty much the part of the line that will be part of our function. I need to add our open and closed points. Let me get rid of the orange lines that guided us. All right, so on the left side, we are starting with an open point because it was less than. And that point was actually right there at what? Negative 2, negative 5. Let me just reconnect. And then the end point on the right side, when x is equal to positive 4, that's a solid point. Let's put a solid point right there. So that is a part that could be used in a piecewise function. It's not like the line on the left that goes forever to the left and to the right. It has a starting and a stopping point that's given to you by this portion of the function. That tells you when to make this line y equals 2x minus 1. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So this time, let's start with the line y equals 4. No slope on this line. This is actually just a horizontal line where all the y values are 4. So it would look like that. These are common in piecewise functions. However, you won't see a vertical line in a piecewise function because you might remember that in order for something to be a function, each input has only one output. In other words, you can't have two points that have the same x value. And a vertical line would have the same x values. So we will see horizontal lines a lot in piecewise functions, but we will not see vertical lines. So how can we turn this horizontal line into a piece of a horizontal line? How about that? Now we're being told that we only make this horizontal line when x is greater than negative 3. So let's start with our full line. Next, we need to think about when are the x values going to be greater than negative 3. So right here is x equals negative 3. So if we think of this entire line going up, we are looking for times when our x values are greater than. So that would be going in this direction. So that's the piece of the line that we want for this graph. Let's get our eraser out and erase the part of the line that we don't want. So we do not want this part of the line. Let's go ahead and get rid of our orange lines. So the last thing we have to do is decide our starting point. Is it an open or closed point? So since this is greater than, not equal to, we use an open point to show that our graph starts from that point, but that point is not part of the solution. Let's take a look at another one. Same line, but this time we only want this line when the x value is less than or equal to positive 2. So you have to think about where is x equal to positive 2 right about here. So we would have like a vertical line showing this area. And we want to know when x is less than going in this direction. So that shows you the area where we're going to actually use the green line. Let's go ahead and erase the part of the green line that we don't want. And now let's get rid of our orange guidelines. And now we have to decide, does this have an open or closed point? Is the point at positive 2, is it a solution or not? And since it says x is less than or equal to 2, that point is a solution for our graph. So we put a nice solid point at 2, 4 and leave our line going to the left. All right, let's try one last one that uses this same function of y equals 4. This time, we're in between the x values of negative 6 and negative 1. We know that because we have the variable in between those less than signs. So where's negative 6? Six, it's right around there, and it goes till we get to negative 1, which is right there. So if we extend these lines, 
you can see the region where this line, this piece of this function, is in between those two orange lines. Once again, let's get out our eraser and erase the parts of the line that we do not want to have. And get rid of our orange lines. And now we're ready to put in our solid or open points. So at negative 6, that says negative 6 is less than or equal to x. So that part is going to be a solid point. And at negative 1, it just says less than. So that's going to be an opening point showing that that is where the solution goes to, but doesn't actually get there. Negative 1 is not an actual solution. So that shows you how we can end up with little sections of horizontal lines, which are always in the form y equals a number. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So if you're feeling confident in this, go ahead and try to graph this one. Uh, draw your line and then figure out which part of the line would make just this piece between negative 6 and positive 3 for your x values. So what you should do first is start with your y-intercept, because this is simply y equals mx plus b form. So we have a point at 0, positive 4. Our slope is 1 third, so that means up 1, right 3. And we can do that again, and maybe another time. And then if I go to down, I can go to the left 3. And then I can go ahead and draw my line. Now I can take a look at when do I actually want to use this line. So I actually want to use this line from the x value of negative 6 to the y value of 3. So we're just interested in the line that goes between those two orange lines. So let's get our eraser out and erase the parts that we don't want. We don't want this. And we don't want the end over here. And I'll go ahead and erase the orange lines. And the last thing I have to do is go ahead and add my points. But I always have to be thinking, is it going to be an open point or a closed point? So we start at the negative 6 value. It's negative 6 is less than x. So that would be an open point. Whereas at the positive 3, it is a closed point. And that would be our line. At this point, you might be getting a little tired of making an entire line and then erasing the part that you don't need. You might have figured out where your line started and stopped before you made your line on this problem. So the next thing we're going to look at is actually the same exact graph. But notice that the equation of the line is given in a different form. This is common with piecewise functions because it makes it easier to start from a point other than the y-intercept. So this is a version of point slope. Now the traditional way of doing point slope would have this positive 2 here over with the y, and it would be like y minus 2 equals 1 third times x plus 6. So what I've done here is just taken the negative 2 and moved it over where it becomes a positive 2, and that matches up well with the vertex form that we've learned with quadratics. So let me just get rid of that and we'll move on. So graphing this line makes it a lot easier to just graph the part we need and not graph the entire line. So we start with our point, which is at negative 6, 2. Remember, when we're given this form that mimics vertex form, you think opposite for the parentheses and don't change it for the outside number. So we're looking at opposite of positive 6 is negative 6, and don't change the 2. So that is my starting point at negative 6, positive 2. Now I can look ahead and realize that because this sign does not have an or equal to, that's going to be the open point at negative 6, 2. And then I can go ahead and just start using my slope from that point going up 1 over 3. But I'm going to pay attention and think about when I get to the point where x is equal to positive 3, I'm going to stop with a closed point. So I go up 1 over 3 again. And then when I do it one more time, I end up at x equals 3. So this setup 
although that doesn't look quite as nice as my first one. This setup helps you just graph the part you need so you're not making this giant line and erasing the part you don't need. So this point slope form will be more common as we do the pieces of piecewise functions. And here's the last two to go ahead and try. Go ahead and pause the video so you can get these graphs and then hit play to check your answers. So in the next video, you'll see how to put it all together and do more than one function together to form a piecewise function.